This is the Chefpreneur Podcast, where we inspire professional cooks to take on greater risk to build a personal chef business for themselves. Now, here's your host, Andres Hinojosa. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Chefpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Andres Hinojosa. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Listen, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for you supporting this podcast. We love to bring you guys valuable content on how to start, run, and grow a personal chef business of your own and become a chefpreneur. And it honestly just brings me so much joy to bring you guys some valuable content. We really want you to be able to take actionable, st- uh, actionable steps uh, to get and achieve your dreams and what you're looking for out of your business by listening to this podcast. So again, we love to just bring you guys this content. And uh, before I get in and dive into my topic of why uh, I titled it, Why Your Website Probably Sucks. Um, I really want to dive into something real quick. It's kind of off topic, to be honest, but I've been getting this a lot lately, not only in our Facebook group, but just through email and just through comments that I see throughout um, throughout social media. And, and that's if you're not a professionally, quote unquote, chef, trained chef, can you do and can you be a personal chef and start a personal chef business? And the answer is absolutely yes. All right. So um, I've been getting this question a lot. I've been seeing it a lot in the comments. I've been seeing it a lot in the group. And I really want you guys to feel confident to understand that really cooking is only about 20% of the entire service. And a lot of us really actually can cook really good. And so, um, and you know, and I don't really care if I get haters on this, but to be honest with you, this whole cliche of, are you a real chef and so forth and so on? Um, it really does chat me a little bit. And I, I've been, you know, I've, I've talked about this topic before, but I really want to reassure and reiterate that, that you don't need to be some professionally trained chef in order to start your own business. Listen, if you start your own business, you're the executive chef of your own company and no one can tell you otherwise. So I just fell into my heart to tell you guys that if you're sitting here listening to this podcast today and you were thinking like, man, I'm just feeling down. I don't know if I have what it takes. I don't know if I have enough professional experience. I'm here to tell you that you can do this business. I'm here that you could that could t- I'm here to tell you that you can be successful. And don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. I can't stand it when people tell you what you can and cannot do. The only person that can decide that is you. So I want to encourage you guys and really inspire you guys to, to feel uplifted and say, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to, I'm going to make something happen. And regardless of my fears, I'm going to take the step forward. So anyway, I just, I don't know who needed to hear that. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Um, and so I really wanted to just encourage you guys that if you are not a professionally trained chef, you can can start a personal chef business. So let's dive right in to my topic today on, I labeled this podcast, why your website probably sucks. Now, yes, it was to draw attention. I wanted to give a title that draw, you know, to draw attention to the podcast, but realistically, I don't want to offend anybody on this podcast. That's not what it's for. I want to enlighten you to show you what I've learned about website building and, and really about how the messaging and the entire aesthetics, but with the messaging, um, which is also called copy and kind of the marketing world is very, very important on your website. So let me first start there. Most of you that have a website, you're probably really focused on your story. You're probably really focused on all these food pictures. I mean, come on, we're chefs, we're cooks. We love cooking. We, you know, we, we want to take pictures of food. And, and to be honest, people are attracted to pictures of food. There's nothing wrong with posting pictures of food, of course, on your website. But here's the issue. Many of you guys on your website right now, you might be looking at it and there's probably a life story that you're telling where you're saying, hey, my name is Chef Nathaniel, or my name is Chef, you know, Jessica, and I've been a chef for 18 plus years, or I've been a chef for this long, and I work for this, and I work for this person, and it, and it's like, you know, I got inspired from cooking for my grandma at a young age of six, and there's this, you know, right on the front page of your website, there's this massive story, six paragraphs of, you know, of, of really about your life story. And I don't want to be mean to say this, okay, but I really want you to get a wake-up call. Unfortunately, no one really cares. Unfortunately, the customer or the client doesn't really care. And I'm not saying that because no one cares as in no one cares about you or your story. I'm just saying that unfortunately, us human beings, we're selfish. Most people that are looking at a website, they're going to a website, you're finding, you're trying to figure out something for you, right? Let's face it, if we're sitting here, we're browsing Amazon or we're on walmart.com or wherever, you know, wherever you shop online or whatever, you're looking for something specific. Now you might be just browsing, but chances are you're looking for something specific. And so you're typing in the search engine of what you want to look for. If you're Googling something, there's something specific that you're actually wanting to accomplish by actually searching that term or searching that word on Amazon and you're purchasing a a product that you actually want to buy. Okay. Now think of it this way. 
if all you did was search something and then the maker of the product you're trying to buy just puts out this whole entire message, that's all you know about. You're like, hey, how do I buy the freaking product that you're trying to sell me? All I see is that, you know, whatever, you founded the company in 1969 and you're, you know, your your father, you know, started it and now you're the second or third generation and yada, yada, yada. Again, it's not that we don't want to tell a story because that's a great way to market. However, you want to tell the story to resonate with the person who's buying your services, all right? So I'm going to give you these just really simple three things that your website, especially your front your your front page or your landing page or your homepage, whatever you want to call it, especially that that page has. So I'm going to give you three pointers of what that website, what your website on the homepage needs to portray to future clients and customers, all right? So you ready? Let's dive in. Number one, It needs to state clearly what it is that you offer, what it is that you do, okay? So again, when people are doing a website, I've seen many websites where, you know, in our Facebook group, by the way, if you haven't joined our movement group on Facebook, it's a free group. There's over 3,600 chefs in there that you can literally, you know, uh, put up questions. You get a lot of answers, a lot of engagement. Um, The culture that we've built here as chefpreneurs to really help each other. And so you don't get a bunch of nasty people in there. And really, I just want you to go ahead and go to Facebook, type in the chefpreneur movement, and you'll see the Facebook group. You know, you'll just answer a couple questions as a free group, and then we'll let you you in. Um, you know, uh, Ariane will let you in. She'll she'll grant you access to the group and you have access to 3,600 plus chefs that are like-minded of yourself and trying to build a personal chef business. Okay. But there's many times I see many chefs posting their website in the Facebook group and they're saying, you know, can you guys help me? Can you guys review my website? Can you let me know what I'm doing wrong or tell me what you think? And a lot of these websites, again, I'm not saying that they're they're visually bad, okay? So they're, it's not like they're ugly or anything like that, but they're not going to resonate with very many people. Uh, I just recently went over a website. I won't mention the person, and I'm not trying to call anybody out, but I, I did go over a website that we saw in the group recently, and it was literally a picture of this beautiful food, and it didn't say any one word. So when I first, when I went first of the website, the first thing I see is just this big picture of food. Okay. Not bad, but realistically, because I know that they're a personal chef, I know what they do, but to someone who doesn't know what they're all about, they're literally going to go to that website and they're just going to see a picture of food. They're not going to know, is it a restaurant? They don't know anything. They just see a picture of food. Then when I scrolled down, I literally saw six paragraphs of the chef's life story. And again, it's not that nobody cares about your story, but it's so much words that no one's really going to read that right? They're looking for services. They're looking for you to do something for them. They're looking to fulfill a need that they have that you can help them with. And and, 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 and here's the real psychology of it. When people go to your website, they're literally going to give you around five to seven seconds to figure out what you have to offer, to figure out what you do, okay? And then what actually you do that will make their life better. And then really how to purchase your services or reach you or contact you or however you want to call it. All right, so first things first, you need to portray what it is that you offer, okay? So if we call this a tagline, right? So let's say I went to that same website and that tagline now wrote wrote, uh, a personal chef services uh, for any occasion or personal chef services specializing in keto-friendly cuisine or whatever, okay? Well, when you go to that website, you don't need to spend brain calories. You don't need to figure out, you don't need a PhD to figure out what it is that this person offers and what they do. You clearly see that it's personal chef services, you know, whatever, dedicated to keto-friendly food. And you're like, oh, I want to lose weight. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find a chef to do some keto meals for me so I can lose weight for my, you know, for me to look, you know, better for my spouse or whatever, right? So that's what it's all about. You need to understand that they have to tell, they have to be able to get that from your website. You have to be able to tell them that in the first, like, literally three seconds. Because what happens is, Really, on average, the the average person right now in, in today's world, right? Think about it. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. You're on YouTube. You're driving down the road. You're seeing billboards. You know, you go to check your mailbox and you're seeing tons and tons of coupons and, and promotions and flyers from local grocery stores to heating and air companies and and right. And then you're going down the down the road and you're seeing you're even seeing not only the billboards, but then you're seeing sometimes you're even seeing other cars with advertisements on it, right? Then you're listening to the radio. What are you doing on the radio? You're listening and music, and you're also hearing what? Advertisements. The typical person today sees over a thousand advertising images a day, a day. So they don't want to spend the calories. They don't want to spend their time trying to figure it out, trying to figure out, can you help them with their problem? 
right? Again, if you're going to Amazon and you're and you're wanting to buy a wallet, you're probably going to type in the search bar wallet. And instead of a instead of all these pictures of wallets, imagine if you just got a bunch of paragraphs of the people who make the wallet about how they made the wallet and the life story of it. It's going to drive you nuts. You're like, I just want to look at a wallet. I want to be able to buy a wallet and that's it. Then after the fact, maybe maybe as you're looking at the wallet and then you're comparing to, then you can maybe dive in deeper like, okay, what is it made out of? What's the quality? What are the reviews, right? But in the initial, in the initial gut reaction, think about how little of a time you're looking for something on Amazon and how little of a time you're giving everyone there to see what it is that you want to buy. You're usually making a decision within 10 seconds. So nothing is different about your personal chef services. When someone comes to a website, especially your website, you need to portray what it is that you offer. So that's number one. Number two, we kind of already talked about it. Well, how is it, how are you going to portray how you can benefit their life? In fact, most people look at the picture on their website as being food or whatever. You actually want the picture on your website, the first picture that someone sees to portray someone or something using your services right? So again, going back to the keto-friendly personal chef, if someone was there looking like they're looking in the mirror, like they lost weight with like a, with maybe like a meal sitting on, on, you know, next to them on the counter or something like that in the kitchen, it's going to portray like, I want to be that person. I want to be the person who's losing weight with these meals. So it resonates very fast and very efficiently in the person's brain. Psychologically, it's like, I want to be that person in the picture. Again, if you're offering private events, which in my uh, personal chef business, we do just private events events. We don't do meal preparation, right? So when you go to our website, you see a table of people gathering around eating food. You want to be that person at the dinner table. When someone's looking at our website, we want them to envision themselves using our services. This is very crucial, okay? And many of us don't do that. Well, again, we blast out. Now, again, there's a, there's a time and place when you scroll down and you kind of have more of a gallery of your food. That's fine. But for people that are willing, like now that you've spoken to them, they know you can help them. Then they'll dive in a little bit more to figure out, you know, how you can really help them or to see, you know, what packages you offer and how to, you know, how to do all that stuff, right? So again, we want pictures of your food on your website, but not the very first thing that they see. Because again, you know, sometimes I go to these websites. I don't know. Is it a food, you know, is it a wholesale food company? Is it a restaurant? Is it a food distributor? You don't know. You just see a picture of food and you're confusing the clients. There's a guy that I follow by the name of Donald Miller. He runs a company called Story Brand. I love it. And this is where I've gotten a lot of these principles. We've actually invested in this program to learn these principles to bring you guys. And he always says, if you confuse your customers, you'll lose your customers. And it's so true. Okay. So again, they don't give you very much time. So you got to make that impression and really tell them how their life is going to be better. So again, it's like, Hey, you know, personal chef services, you know, specializing in keto friendly food. And then maybe the sub tagline or some text right underneath that, that's not as big, but maybe a little bit smaller saying like, you know, live longer, live healthier and eat deliciously. Right. Uh, that's how it's going to benefit. Okay. I want to lose, I want to, I want to lose weight or I want to live healthier. I want to live longer and I'm going to eat delicious food. Very, very simple, right? We don't want to have them use a bunch of brain calories to figure out what it is that we offer and how we're going to help them make their life better. The third and final thing about what your website needs to portray very well is how to get in contact with you. If you right now have a little button at the top right or the top left on your website, and it's just one little hyperlink or one little word that says contact, you're losing out on tons of business. You need one big button. They call it a CTA or also known as a call to action action. You need a big call to action right there, right underneath your tagline and your sub tagline, which is what we just discussed. You need one big button that says, you know, contact me or book your experience today or schedule an appointment or schedule a consultation, whatever you wanted to do. It's a way for them to clearly see what they have to click on to take action, to do business with you. It's called a CTA. It's a call to action. And it's very, very important to be able to have that very clearly stated on your website so people know how to do business with you. The whole purpose of your website, unfortunately, is not to look cool. It's not to just impress you and your friends. It's to get customers and have them. It's actually to take people that are looking for services, turn them into leads, and then turn them into paying customers. The only thing that your website is there for is for people to reach out to you to hopefully hire you and book your services. Am I right or am I right? Okay, so I wanted to just give you these three 
really simple techniques and these three things that just I hope will have you go back to your website, analyze your website, look at it, say, you know what, Chef Andres, I need to change some things here. I really need to position these things around. I guarantee if you make these small adjustments, you're going to see a bigger uptick into people actually contacting you, reaching out to. Yes, there's a lot more we could talk about on your website, but to be honest, those are the core three things. Those three things, if you change them, I really know in my in the bottom of my heart that you're going to start seeing better results because people are going to get more clear about what it is that you offer, how you're going to make their life better, and what they got to do to actually do business with you. So anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this podcast. Listen, we love to see and hear your guys' questions. Make sure you join that Facebook group. Go over to the Chefpreneur Movement group there in Facebook. Again, join the group. It's completely free. Um, There's over 3,600 chefs that you're going to be with like-minded people looking to start a business or have already started a business, and you'll be able to tap into some great advice into an awesome community. Also, make sure you go to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Head over to YouTube, type in Chefpreneur in the search bar. That's Chef, P-R-E-N-E-U-R, and you'll see our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification button. And we are bringing back our 2022 Chefpreneur Mastermind Retreat next January. Okay, next January in 2022, we already have half the tickets sold out while I'm recording this podcast. But if you're interested in coming to our retreat, this is literally a retreat designed to give you a step-by-step action plan and the most amazing inner circle community, meaning other chefs that are literally become family where we mentor you and we guide you step-by-step into starting, running, and growing a six-figure personal chef business. If you want more information or if you want to schedule a call with me, make sure you text RETREAT to 619-304-6496. That's text RETREAT to 619 619- 304-6496. And uh, we still have tickets available. We'd love to just connect with you, talk more about details about how you can join us and or in Orlando in 2022 in January for our next Chefpreneur Mastermind Retreat. Hey guys, we love you. Be blessed. We can't wait to talk to you guys again next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Chefpreneur Podcast, where we want to educate, motivate, and inspire as many chefs to become their own boss. Please subscribe to the podcast and join us every week to be part of the movement. To sign up for our free online web class, visit thechefpreneurwebinar.com.